Krishna, everyone. Hare Krishna. Krishna. So we're uh, here to read Srimad Bhagavatam, and we're joined by our very wonderful and lovely friends who have come to visit us for first time in our new place, um, Nimai Chandra Prabhu and uh, Pranasaki Mataji. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to read Bhagavatam. Anything you'd like to say? Welcome to Wapid. <laughs> great, great having you so close by. You, you may see us more often here. Good. <laughs> oh, no longer. <laughs> this is what we wanted to hear. <laughs> okay. So where are we? Mm. Where are we? <laughs> We're uh, third canto. Yes. Canto, chapter thirty-three. Yeah. Takes five. And the chapter. This is the uh, last chapter of the third canto mm. so we almost completed the third canto and text number five is it that's mm -hmm. the one that's highlighted text number five so we can start with the invocation Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Sudevaya. One of you would like to start. Did you read the Sanskrit? No, nope, just, just the. My English. dear Lord, I <coughs> have assumed this body in order to diminish the sinful activities of the fallen and to enrich their knowledge in devotion and liberation. By your own will, you assume incarnations as a boar and as other forms. Similarly, you have appeared in order to distribute transcendental knowledge to your dependents. Okay, and uh, purport. In the previous verses, the general transcendental qualifications of the Supreme Personality of Godhead were described. Now the specific purpose of the Lord's appearance is also described. By his different energies, he bestows different kinds of bodies upon the living entities who are conditioned by their propensity to lord it over material nature. But in course of time, these living entities become so degraded that they need enlightenment. It is stated in Bhagavad Gita that whenever there are discrepancies in the discharge of the real purpose of this material existence, the Lord appears as an incarnation. The Lord's form as Kapila directs the fallen souls and enriches them with knowledge and devotion so that they may go back to Godhead. There are many incarnations of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, like those of the boar, the fish, the tortoise and the half-man, half-lion. Lord Kapila Dev is also one of the incarnations of Godhead. It is dis accepted herein that Lord Kapila Dev appeared on the surface of the earth to give transcendental knowledge to the misguided conditioned souls. Okay, so <coughs> usually we just read and read like a paragraph and then uh, open up on that. So if you have anything, realizations or anything to share or not in someone else. I was thinking that it's incredible that we have chosen to leave the spiritual world and come here to fulfill whatever propensities we may have had. And it would be so easy for Krishna to say that, okay, you made that choice, now see how it goes, <laughs> kind of thing. Uh, however, he is constantly thinking about us and what he can do to help us find our way back home mm. by, by taking various incarnations. So even though, because once we come here, the material energy is so powerful that we're so easily conditioned and it almost does feel as though it's now impossible to come out of that mm. without help. And Krishna is always choosing to help us in that moment even though we made that conscious decision to reject him in some way and then come to the material world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I find that very powerful and very uh, just just to see the compassion of the Lord mm. very nice mm. yeah. very nice anything yes 
it's like I think sometimes in Christianity it can be like eternal damnation or mm. you know you go to heaven or hell but it's a nice point that okay we're sent here in Prabhupada so it's like a prison or or ref, you got to become Refor- reformed or but still yeah Christian doesn't look from afar yeah he still comes or sends his representatives for always people are coming as it were in different paths as well mm-hmm. not just oh the Iskon world the hope different faiths where you are but so many saints and great devotees and it's interesting it's very loving mm-hmm. yes sometimes we can be condemning maybe speaking for myself they did wrong they gotta do this or they but there's that it's like a loving parent as mm-hmm. opposed to a strict parent mm-hmm. you did wrong but you know go mm-hmm. away but yeah the loving parent disciplines you but you feel not like destroyed like not mm. hurt totally. you feel sheltered and yeah, yeah. <coughs> interesting anything Mother? I was just thinking about the um, the aspect of time mm. and how in each age the Lord assumes different forms so it's not just for a certain amount of time he chooses to appear but he chooses to be um, with the living entities forever um, mm-hmm. by appearing in different times different ages mm-hmm. and so he's always loving as you said guiding protecting sheltering giving that energy that um, that love to his devotees through these incarnations for a time eternally mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. Uh, yeah just a, as a loving father he's always with the living entity and his kindness is and incomparable to anything else that we can experience. Yeah, yeah. That's so true. Yeah, I was thinking. <coughs> I mean, apart from the incarnations, there's one incarnation that is there all the time with us, which is the super soul. Mm-hmm. And so the Paramatma remains like he's like, okay, you're going. I'm coming with you, mm-hmm. even though you know, you're choosing to leave me. But I know you're not going to be happy once you do. So. I'm still going to be there with you and knocking and trying to get you to, you know, come back, come back. Mm. But I like that. There was one uh, sentence here. Yeah. I like it when Prabhupada restates, like, a translation. Like, you know, often we'll learn, like, a shloka verbatim. And then, in so many purports, Prabhupada will quote that Sanskrit, and then he'll change ever so slightly the, the translation. Like, not change the meaning, but just change the way it's worded. The same meaning is there. Yeah. But like here he says, um, it is stated in Bhagavad Gita that whenever there is discrepancies in the discharge of the real purpose of this material existence, the Lord appears as an incarnation, you know? Yeah. Whenever and wherever there is a, you know, like that decline in mm-hmm. religious activities. So, you know, discrepancies in the discharge of, whatever this, discrepancies in the discharge of the real purpose of this material existence. It's, so, it's just, I just love the way Prophet is so amazing in the way that he, uh, he phrases things and words them at different times. So. Mm. It's yeah. interesting though that, so, <coughs> so wherever there are discrepancies in the discharge of the material existence, I was thinking when we have prob like we were speaking before when we first came, say obstacles, tests, problems, and you're at your lowest almost. That's where, if we're say have nice association or we're being guided properly, where Krishna flourishes the most, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like when I'm being tested, when I've got and stuff going on that I've got to deal with if I'm nicely fixed in Krishna conscious or have nice association then that's where my Krishna conscious because then I start to read more or maybe just read anyway or just like start to sit shelter of my rounds and go to the temple more and so it just reminded me of that that when there's when things are not going right in the material world it's that you know Krishna manifests more in our lives also Yeah. yeah And then, not that I wish this, but like Kunti Devi saying, mm. I want all these calamities. Yeah. I've never desired that move. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but mm-hmm. I'm not on that level. But it's interesting because that's where we, yeah. the breakdown seems to need to be there for us to 
Yeah. We align ourselves regularly. Mm. Mm. Otherwise, we get comfortable and mm. autopilot. You know, mm. just do our sadhana. And true. I'm a devotee, and I, yeah, I do my service, and I offer my food, and I, that's me. And mm. yeah. sometimes it needs to break down to rebuild. And yeah, strength is strength is built through resistance. Mm. So when things are difficult, mm. you know, if you just lift the same two pounds. Mm -hmm. For ten years, of course, you'll you'll build some weight, but not as much as if you mm -hmm. went to three and then to five and mm -hmm. then to ten, and mm -hmm. you know. So when there's more resistance, actually, we become stronger. Mm -hmm. And there's the famous saying, "We don't kill you. If it doesn't kill you, it makes you stronger." Mm -hmm. <laughs> of course, if you die in the process, <laughs> trying to serve Krishna, that's also perfect. <laughs> like that. Guru uh, Maharaj always says this statement, doesn't he? That once. Greatness is measured by the ability to tolerate provoking, provoking situations. Mm. Yeah, Prabhupada says that in Krishna book. Mm. It's actually there in Krishna book. Mm. Man's greatness can be determined by his ability to tolerate provoking circumstances. <coughs> well, <laughs> okay. Is <laughs> that one off? <laughs> Another failed one. Should we read the next next verse? Or anyone has anything else they wanted to point out? I just out? wanted to share one more yeah. thing that <coughs> talks me. about the various incarnations and how the Lord comes in so many weird and wonderful forms as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, such as a boar. Mm. If you're thinking the Lord in terms of majestic, you wouldn't necessarily think <coughs> that somebody is gonna he's gonna take a form of a boar or mm. or a fish. Or a tortoise, like, but mm. but there are situations that that happen, and f to fulfill a particular outcome or to 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 achieve a certain thing based on that time, place, and circumstance, the Lord will take any form to fulfill that purpose and to to help the devotees or help mm. those that need that help at that moment in time. And it's just thinking again, that's another characteristic of the Lord that. Mm. Yeah, just, you know, he'll do whatever's needed, whenever it's needed, to protect his devotees. Yeah, it's nice. Nothing, you know, nothing's too low. Mm. Mm. Yeah, become a boar, no problem. Yeah. Become yeah. a fish, you know, become a tortoise, <laughs> just so that they can put the mountain on my back and churn the mm. mokush. Okay, no problem, I'll become a, a turtle. Mm. It's like, whatever you need, I'm willing to... Yeah, to do it to Just yesterday, I was at Imperial KC Sok, and somebody was as I was talking about Krishna Arjun and the chariot situation, and somebody was saying that's really unusual for God to to be a chariot driver of of you know of his friend or his his junior. Mm. Mm. And I was saying, yeah, but that's the that's the loving relationship that is able to mean that the Lord is able to take that position even though we may see it as a <coughs> junior position to Arjuna but that is demonstrating that actually through our love the Lord is captured in so many different ways mm -hmm. and, and I guess the same applies when he's taking these different incarnations that the love he has for those he's trying to protect means that as you said that there's nothing that's too low mm -hmm. it's whatever is captured needed. by the love yeah yeah, do the needful. <laughs> the classic. Mm. Even, even Krishna does the needful. <laughs> Very nice. Should we read the next one? Do you want to read? Uh, yeah, you can read. So this is text 6. To say nothing of the spiritual advancement of persons who see the Supreme Person face to face, even a person born in a family of dog eaters immediately becomes eligible to perform Vedic sacrifices if he once utters the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or chants about him, hears about his pastimes, offers him obeisances or even remembers him. Purport. Herein, the spiritual potency of chanting, hearing or remembering the holy name of the Supreme Lord is greatly stressed. Rupa Goswami has discussed the, the, the sequence of sinful activities of the conditioned soul and he has established in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu that those who engage in devotional service become freed from the reactions of all sinful activities. This is also confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. 
The Lord says that he takes charge of one who surrenders unto him and he makes him immune to all reactions to sinful activities. Mm -hmm. If by chanting the holy name of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, one becomes so swiftly cleared of all reactions to sinful activities, then what is to be said of those persons who see him face to face? <coughs> extremely powerful in the, the statement about removing the reactions of all sinful activities mm. through the process of bhakti or devotional service. Mm. In what way? Uh, just, it's, it's, well, I'm, just thinking, I'm just thinking in terms of being conditioned we commit sinful activities you know I'm sure on a daily basis mm. So if you look at our life, how much sins we may have committed in our life. Mm -hmm. And Krishna is saying, he's kind of giving a free pass almost, that, you know, just, just do this, come to me, surrender, perform mm -hmm. bhakti. Mm -hmm. And he then, what's the wording Prabhupada uses here, that uh, the Lord says he takes charge, he takes mm -hmm. charge of one who surrenders unto him and makes him immune. Mm -hmm. Immune, yeah, he's surrendered. You know, that is, uh, for me, that's a very powerful mm -hmm. statement to become immune, which means that Krishna is now protect. Just like we may take some vaccine to try and protect us, mm -hmm. Krishna is saying, "Well, I will protect you. Then you don't no longer need to worry. The only vaccine you need to take is bhakti yoga. You know, if we do some devotional service, and as soon as we do that, he takes to charge, take charge over our over our activities." Which is which is very sheltering and mm. feels makes you feel very safe mm. to be in that just under that shelter of of Krishna. Yeah, it means <coughs> Krishna must be a very big forgiving person. Mm. Mm. You know, we're definitely at least, I say we, I don't want to speak for all of us, but the the royal we in general, you know, are not so easily forgiving, you know, it's like harbor things for so long and carry them and Krishna's like okay you know, as long as you turn to me and you know say more or less oh I'm sorry Krishna I, I want to chant the holy name with sincerity then I'll wipe the slate clean <laughs> we'll forget about everything we'll just move forward because that's kind of what it is and the karma is the perpetual amalgamation of activities that have a reaction it means you've acted inappropriately and you're going to have to pay for it in the future. So the wiping out of all karma, making you immune to those reactions, means the slate gets wiped clean and anything that's happened in the past, I no longer hold you accountable for. Mm -hmm. I no longer hold you responsible for. I no longer hold that against you. You're no longer in debt to me for acting inappropriately just simply because you are willing to be, you know, perform bhakti yoga. So it's pretty, uh, mm -hmm. pretty forgiving. <laughs> yeah, forgiving, uh, yeah, also patience. Mm -hmm. How many lifetimes has yeah, each living entity gone through the cycle? And how many lifetimes will Krishna wait? Mm -hmm. He's patiently waiting and he wants us to return more than we want to return, return. to ourselves. Mm -hmm. So unlimited patience. The Lord has. It's it's mind blowing to think about how patient Krishna is. <laughs> yeah. We think we are patient mm. if somebody yeah. acts um, rudely to us and we yeah. we bite our tongue. But how many times have we been rude to Krishna in oh, in, mm -hmm. in our japa or mm -hmm. anything that we <coughs> our devotional service? If it's not in the right mood, Krishna still somewhat accepts our our actions if we have some slight love and devotion. Mm -hmm. So Krishna's patience is uh, unlimited. Mm. Just like you can't count the waves in the ocean, mm. Krishna yes. is so patient with us. What's that term? Yeah. Baba Grahi? Baba Grahi accepts the mood in which I think that's mm. the word, that's it. Because we're reading Krishna book at the moment, which, by the way, thank you so much for yeah. recommending. It's so nice to be going to a Krishna mm -hmm. book again. And, you know, Akura is on his way to 
Vrindavan, and literally to, to just create wreak the biggest havoc yeah. <laughs> that's ever yeah. happened in Vrindavan. He's come to literally take Krishna, Krishna out of Vrindavan. Not only that, he's been sent by Kamsa, Kamsa mm. who is his arch enemy, and you know even Kamsa tells him what he's going to do when he gets there. If this, if you know, if the the Kavalapita, the elephant, mm. if he doesn't crush him to smithereens, yeah, I'm preparing the rest. I got the wrestlers are going to crush him to smithereens, and in the meantime, something you know. I think even before that, he said, "I'm sending two demons to." Yeah. Mm. And it's like, and then a crow is like, okay, I'll go and get him. But all the way to go and get Krishna, he's he's thinking, I just can't wait to see Krishna yeah. and how much I want to, you know, roll in the dust of, you know, Vrindavan and Krishna's yeah. feet and worship Krishna. And I hope that he will, you know, not judge me because I've basically come to kill him. <laughs> Almost kind of thing. He's the messenger of Kamsa. And then he comes and Krishna just accepts him, accepts that, yeah. the mood. He's not interested in what you came yeah. for. You came. Yeah. That's the point. You're here. Yeah. So. Yeah, but it's interesting that, just on that Krishna, <coughs> Krishna book point, okay, Krishna and Balaram accept him and give him darshan, and that, but isn't he cursed by the gopis and the devotees? He does get reaction mm. from the devotees. Maybe not from Krishna, mm. but the devotees take offense. Mm. And I'm pretty sure there's, maybe it's coming up or that, but. God, um, spoiler alert. <laughs> uh, so, but, he, but that's the point being Krishna forgives it, but the devotees were upset. And he does get some slap as a devotee. <laughs> 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 It's interesting, man. <laughs> the love, beloved, and the love, lovers. You know what I mean? Like you have the devotees are meant to be more merciful than the Lord, and I guess they are by giving them the slap. Yeah, because he <laughs> took away Krishna and yeah. that too to Kamsa, mm. <laughs> and so then Prabhupada does explain this has happened to him because he did this. He does explain like that the God just cursed him. Okay. Mm. Oh, sorry. How much is left? Oh, it's quite a long purple word, actually. Yeah. Mm. Should we park it? I think, yeah, we'll have to stop there. Right? Okay, so we'll, uh, any final comments or thoughts? Realizations? Grateful to uh, have had this reading session. Thank you. That's <laughs> yeah. really nice. It is nice. So nice yeah. to read Prabhupada's books together and discuss and chat. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for sharing your insights and your wisdom, despite any apprehensions that may have been there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much for tuning in. Please read Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Prabhupada's books. And if anyone wants to uh, wants a set of Chaitanya Charitamritas leading up to Gorpani, please let us know. Hare Krishna. Shalom Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai.